Hello, multi magnificent, multifaceted maltsters. As a malt mention, and thank you to Rose Avella for that specific malt mention, which is introducing Ralphie Review 893 Extras, in which, having reviewed a whiskey, I uh, go on to do something more generalised and occasionally something a little more eccentric and uh, unusual. And I doubt you're going to see this in many, if any, whiskey channels. But here we go. It starts with my little brother, BigClive.com. He has a big channel on YouTube. Um, I put a link below to the specific video he did where he completely um, adulterates a perfectly good Scotch whisky. It's shocking, it's irreprehensible, and it's just not the done thing malt mates. So I decided to give it a go myself, uh, except I'm going to be a bit more systematic and objective about it. So we're starting with a soda stream. Soda stream is a proprietary brand of um, a machine for gassing liquid, specifically for putting carbon dioxide gas into water to create soda water. And um, basically you get the, the proprietary plastic bottle you put water in it without spilling any in yourself. And then what you do is you attach it firmly. Oh. Wait a That's it. Into the machine. <coughs> I know. I don't quite know what I'm doing here, but I'm just going to wing it and see. So that's it firmly fixed into the machine, locked in. You can tell I don't use these very often. And then you press the button and then the gas comes out the, the little white spout and into the liquor, liquid. And what to do to gasify it, you don't just press the button down and hold it down, you do it gradually. And when it's fully gassed, it makes a farting noise. Oh. At which point, you angle this out, remove the bottle, you can see a little bit smoky on top, looks like some fiendish chemical experiment. Pour it into a glass. You can see the bubbles there, absolutely. Pour a wee bit more in. Oh, that's better. Is it slightly out of shot there? Yeah, you didn't miss that. And then you get soda water. And the thing is that more and more people are using soda making devices because commercial soda is not as fizzy as it used to be. And I can't answer the reason why, but um, more and more classic soda making devices are coming on and even bars are using them so as to get fully carbonated soda water that really delivers the texture, the bubbles, the mouthfeel that hasn't been sanitised through commercial product. Right, what am I going to do next? Mmm. Very refreshing. Well, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. With a bottle of Laphroaig. Why? Because I'm curious. This is Laphroaig Select. I bought it for £32. No discounts going on in the supermarkets at the moment. Uh, a local supermarket and uh, it's not the Laphroaig I would review for you because it's not got an age statement and in my opinion it's putting it tactfully the weakest of the Laphroaig range. It's the Laphroaig you buy for making cocktails that are a little bit peaty. Simple as that. So what we're going to do, I've had this in the fridge chilling and I'm going to pour it into the 
soda stream making bottle. There we are, proper fill level. And I'll also, while I'm at it, I'll just pour a glass for comparison. Not too much, because a little Lefroy goes a long, long way. Back into the soda stream device. Lock it in. Is that it secure? Yes. Now, again, particularly when you've got whiskey in there, it's no longer 100% water. It's 60% water and 40% ethanol. That's the chemical, primarily the chemical component in that in that bottle now. And about 2% is everything else, including caramel E150 and flavour chemicals, sourced from wood and malted barley spirit. Here we go, it gently does it. Oh, a wee bit of mist, a wee bit of scotch mist in there. Doesn't this feel like blasphemy? But hey, unless we experiment, we never know what the results are. Oh, it's now fizzing up a wee bit. I need to let that settle down. I don't want it frothing over because that happened to me last time I was attempting this, doing a, a pre-recording pre uh, dress rehearsal. Uh, and it was just, it was Laphroaig all over the barrel head. And this, it smelled lovely, but I had to re-record the video. Actually, this is the second take. I don't normally give that information out. Well, it's certainly taking on some effervescence, but I can tell you right now, the process needs more patience and it takes longer than when you're putting carbon dioxide in water. And it's probably because the ethanol has less capacity to take and store the carbon dioxide. Oh, it's gonna fizz over. It's gonna fizz over again. That's not too bad, actually. Patience is a virtue. We shall proceed, persevere. You see, some, some bar somewhere is gonna have this as a cocktail. Carbonated spirits. Let it settle down again. I'll give it one more push of the carbon dioxide and then we'll just get out and get on with it because I don't want this video dragging on too long, malt mates. Right, so I think that's going to do it. One more, one more. Oh, that does it. Uh oh, stripping. I've overdone it. Oh, but it smells lovely. <laughs> I'm gonna remove this now. Right. Is this, has this successfully carbonated? No. Does it smell different to the uncarbonated attempt liquor. Yes. The carbonated one's more citrusy. It's frankly it's been agitated significantly, so you'd expect this. So I'll try the the slightly chilled Lefroy. PT TCB more peat, lots of peat, what you'd expect. And um, the carbonated is more complex. It's really brought out a slight citrus creaminess. 
and it certainly changed it. Um, personally, I'm going to give you the third option, which I think is the best one. And this is how it works. This may seem a little bit flippant, but when we experiment with our drinks, we disrupt the orthodoxy of method of consumption, the way we are told to consume whiskey by marketing representatives, which is basically any way you want so long as you buy it. Now that's fine, but um, as time goes on, we may enjoy a whiskey cocktail, we may enjoy a whiskey long drink. It can be very refreshing, particularly in hotter climates, but there's t two reasons that we gravitate to Scotch whisky rather than other spirits, and that is for the complexity of smell and the complexity of taste at which Scotch whisky excels, particularly as a single malt, not so much as a blend anymore, in my opinion. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to pour water into the carbonating jug, which is already slightly carbonated. And I'm now going to add a drop of Laphroaig to that carbonated water. Enough for what you would call a long drink of whiskey. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carbonate the two of them together where the proportion of water is far higher. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to thoroughly wash this device out before I take it back to Big Clive's. Right, that'll do. It's going to be such a mess. Um, it's interesting that it's really holding the fizz here. So essentially this is a whiskey and soda made up at the same time. Um, I'm not sure where that head's coming from. I mean, you can really see it there. It makes actually, it's quite visual, visually strong. So I could imagine a bar would want to do this, so long as they gave me full credit for inventing it. It's half carbonated water with a touch of smoky peatiness to it. And it's really quite refreshing, actually. Anyway, there you have it. Uh, a bit of an alternative malt moment. Um, I was determined to create a reprise to my brother's video. He, frankly, has had more su success uh, with his experiment than I've had with mine. But it was an interesting thing to do and experience. And whatever you do, don't do this with expensive whiskey malt mates because it's a terrible waste. It's fun. It's a one-off, you get a good laugh out of it and you probably discover what you're not going to do to your next, not, what you're not going to get into the habit of doing when you're preparing your whiskey. Oops, excuse me, bubbles. <laughs> Bye.